Hey everyone, welcome to a Render Spaz video tutorial. And in this series, we're going to show you how to create, um, well, this is called making an espresso. I'm going to show you how to create an espresso uh, style of cup and also a plate with a spoon. We're going to create this in 3D Studio Max, and we're also going to use the Corona render, which right now is free and under beta testing. Uh, you can get it at the Corona website, uh, not Corona the drink, but Corona uh, the renderer. I'll, I'll post a link up and also I'll be showing it later on in the video. But this is what we're going to be creating. This is what we're going to be creating. And um, what it focuses on is uh, uh, the lighting setup and modeling and also just uh, making this kind of cool stylized image that you can use for whatever you need it for. Um, so we're going to go through the steps and we'll start off with uh, 3D Studio Max. So let's get in and start creating our espresso cup. All right, so I sped the video up just a tad bit just to get through some of this. So hopefully this is a speed that you can handle. Uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to start with the line tool in the front viewport, and I'm going to just draw out kind of a half cup uh, profile here. Okay. So we'll end it the curve here, and I'll do some tweaking. This will be our bottom half, so it kind of gives us that little bevel uh, inset that we have at the bottom of a, an espresso or coffee cup, mug, cup, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we'll just uh, move down and do some a little bit of fillet to the uh, to the one side here and just kind of smooth this out. Bring the corner up a little bit. So more fillet, just get some more uh, points in there. Smooth this out and bring that down. So you just want to play with the uh, with your uh, segments here and just to kind of give you your points just to give you a little bit more smoothness of the curve. So we're going to grab the curve and I'm going to create some thickness. So I just want a half of the uh, curve here and that we're going to just shift and drag out to make a copy of this. It's going to get roughly in position and then I'm just going to grab some of these in, this, in our, uh, with our segment here and just move these over, maybe get rid of that you to follow the bottom curve now. We just got to curve this off as it's going to be the thickness of our glass. So we're looking at pretty much a profile of our cup. Or, yeah, espresso cup. All right, we're going to bring this guy over. And just kind of move this around. Get a good thickness here and take these two guys. I'm going to use the S snapping here. We're going to snap as the vertex. Okay, and we'll just grab them and now weld them together. So let's select that and try to just straighten this out a bit. Let's make sure it's on the bezier. Oops, there we go. Move this a bit. Just a little bit of adjustment. Now what we want to do is create a little bit of a lip you see on the cups. All right, so we'll just bring this out a little bit here. Try a different, little, couple different modes and see if uh, that works nicely. Bring up the bezier. All right, let's start. Be okay, we're gonna refine. Uh, maybe, you know what, let's just go with that. All right, so now, Let's add the uh, lathe modifier and go to the minimum. Now you can see that we have a cup. So we pretty much have everything already built. We're just going to play with the segments a bit. I'm going to go around 12. And we're just going to play a little, we just get a little bit more res here. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with a low cage this to an edible poly and then I'm going to add a turbo smooth modifier to our cup. So let's go down to the turbo smooth and um, I'll give us some nice smoothness. All right, so now we're going to grab the bottom segments. All right, with the line, we're just going to grab these, uh, we'll loop them and we're going to chamfer them just to give them some, sh some uh, bevel. All right, that'll give us a little bit of an edge. Um, 
No, that looks real right. So you just get a little bit of an edge there at the bottom. And that gives us that little indent that we're looking for. Grab the center here and let's collapse the, that guy. All right. And now over here, um, we want to just make sure uh, what we're going to do is we're going to delete out these polygons. We'll select, make sure they're attached. Sometimes if you don't weld the core of the lathe, you might have some problems. But we're just going to cap this and inset it. And then in this middle section here, we're just going to use the cut tool and start cutting across to make our polygons here. Okay, we don't want angons, so we just got to make sure we have the four sides. So I'm going to cross over this way. Boom. And that should be quite nice for our uh, our inside. Okay, so if we turn on our bevel, or sorry, our turbo smooth, we now have a nice smoothed out bottom piece here. So everything's looking pretty good so far. Um, I might want to adjust the top part just a bit because it looks a little bit too thin. So we can um, start to uh, Add some bevels. We'll bring this uh, line up. We'll move and loop this guy, chamfer, give it some uh, beveled edges. You can see in pretty much what it's doing in real time here. So we're just playing around with the uh, this lip here just to customize it a bit. I'm going to customize it, but more or less tweak it so that it gives us a little bit of a beveled lip. I'm going to add a little more thickness, so I'm going to grab our inner polygons, hit the grow tool, and let's scale that just down just a bit, just to get some more thickness of, of a, a cup itself. So then I'm going to grab the, uh, the one segment here. Uh, I think that should do. I just want it to be a little bit more, just a little bit more of a bulge to the upper part of the lip here. So I'm going to just oops, grab that middle segment there. All right. Let's loop. No, let's just drag it up just a bit just to kind of give us a little bit more of a hump there. That should round it off a bit more. Let me try the chamfer and see what we get. That's more like it. It's looking a lot better. All right, so now we already have a mug, but now we're going to need to get our handle in place. So what I'm going to do is center our pivot here and center our object to the grid. All right? You can right click at the bottom there and that will set it to zero. Okay, that's at the bottom of the bar, your X, Y, and Z. And now what we want to do is we're going to create a handle. So I'm just going to kind of rough this out. Um, I'm not going to use any symmetry. I'm just going to kind of guess. Start from this corner, move across, start to give, get like a little bit of a cutout of a box. So just kind of drag this way. We want to make sure we just corner these guys off. And we don't want we want polygons. We want four corners. Okay, that's crucial because if you if you get any uh, if you get triangles or you get angons, you're going to get pinches. So we don't want those. What I'm going to do is uh, just drag out the segments a bit. If you want, you can copy um, the values from the upper uh, vertice. What I mean by that is you can take this top vertice, copy its Y dimension, and then put it into uh, the Y spot. Copy and paste the, uh, the numbers of where it is in, in 3D space. Or better yet, you can just move these in place so that it looks quite close. You don't have to be perfect with it. All right, so I'm just going to adjust these a bit more here. Let's make sure that it's not too crooked. You can see this line, just move it up a bit and uh, just kind of get a feel for where we want it to start extruding out. So we're going to grab these polygons here. We're going to use the extrude tool. And we're going to extrude out like so. All right, and then we're just going to move, whoops, going to move these up over here and just move them. Maybe just rotate it a bit. 
let's just kind of get where we want our handle to be. Check our corners here. We'll just kind of move this up. And you can see now, if I add the smoothness, we got the little handle there coming out and starting to form. So that's good. It's, everything's working out pretty good. It's very low poly at this moment. Then we're going to create a box. All right, well, um, just get something close here. And we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do the, we're going to do a Boolean at this at this point, but uh, you know, I don't always recommend a Boolean. You can cut them out, cut the, uh, the square out yourself by tracing it. But for this, it's because it's such low poly, we can uh, we can use a Boolean, and then we'll just clean up if anything is needed to be cleaned up here, which there is. There's not there's no connected uh, vertices here to the proper corner, so that it gives us a nice uh, nice hole in the. Uh, center here for our handle. So I'm going to just cut, or sorry, I'm just going to clean these guys up a little bit here. And you can see here we got some errors, so we just got to fix it up. So we just want to take our the corner here, we're going to add the cut tool, and then just cut these, connect these guys right to the corner, so that's going to start polygons that we need, or four-sided. Also, we lost our corners here, so I'm just going to re-add them back. All right. And then over here, we just got to fix this. So you can see that we have that edge. You can't just remove So we're going to have to add a cut to these corners. Same here. I'm going to grab this segment here, we're just going to get rid of that, that edge. Actually, I want to say edge is not a segment, but anyways. All right, so now we're going to just form this uh, handle a bit, just to make it not so square. So right now, I mean, it doesn't look too bad. You can get away with this, and uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of tweaks. All right, so let's see what we have and what kind of issues that we're uh, facing at this moment. Uh, we do have some pinches going up. The top. I just want to grab these edges, these inner, these. Uh, I just want to add an edge here, a chamfer there, so that we can get a little bit of an edge in the, where the handle comes out. And I notice some pinching. I'm going to get to that in a minute here. Just going to connect all these guys, make sure we got no mesh issues. We're also going to select the box here that we've created the whole the box and we're just going to chamfer here and make an edge. Now this didn't connect properly. So what we gotta do is just fix this. Alright, you can see that little mess that we got going on here. So it's gonna create a couple cuts here. Connect these guys. Just weld these together here. Let's have a look. Yeah. I'm just gonna grab these inner uh, edges, and we're just gonna scale them down a little bit. And then the outer ones, we'll scale them up, just to kind of give it not as to have it so sharp. So we just want to kind of take these uh, these edges and just move them, just so that we can kind of relax that edge there just a bit. All right, so let's just make some of this rounded. Let's round these off a little bit. So we'll just kind of bring them in by the scale tool here and just uh, make it so it's not so boxy looking. All right, now I can see where those pinches are that really bother me, so we're gonna fix those up. Got a little bit of a mesh issue here, and that's probably because Something is either not welded. So we take a look. Yep. When I move this, it's, these need to weld together. So I'm just going to grab them and make sure they're welded. And I can see the upper one here. You can see where the mesh that had to be welded as well, so that it doesn't have any pinches. And look at that. So we have a nice extruded handle 
I'm going to increase our res for our turbo smooth and you can see now that we have quite nice uh, mesh and smooth of a coffee or espresso mug. So I just want to bring these guys in a bit because they're a little bit bulged out. So I'm just going to do some tweaking to the handle there. And we're not looking too bad here. We got something. All right, we got something that we can work with. Um, it's going to do a little bit more tweaks to this handle here. And you can always add a little more vertices, some more detail, just to round this thing off if you like. Uh, but what I'm going to use this for, I think this is going to be pretty good. I'm just going to see how it kind of bulges out a bit too. Just want to round this off a bit. Take these. All right, so that's pretty much going to sum it up here uh, for the espresso cup. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have to start looking at, I'm just going to move these in a bit, and we're going to start looking at uh, creating our plate that it sits on. So I'm going to go up and start with using the line tool. We're just going to drag out pretty much how we made the uh, cup. We just want to make ourselves a profile here. So I have a nice little area where the cup sits in and then I'm just going to drag up a little bit and give it a little bit of a bend. So the plate bends up a bit and it's going to this way. I'm just kind of roughly drawing out the profile here. And then this is the bottom piece where it has that inner bevel there, that inset. Pretty much where the place plate sits on um, on the table so it just gives you that kind of like riser so here we're going to uh, smooth these guys out and just kind of form out what our plate should look like you can spend a lot of time on this and you can create yourself some pretty unique um, plates if you want I'm just going to do something simple here So you'll see what this does at a moment here. This is going to be quite nice. Smooth this out a bit. Bring this in. And now we'll come up to our modifier tab. Okay, and we're going to use the, the lathe and we're just going to go to the minimum and uh, for the align and look what we have so far. We got a quite nice plate. We just need to uh, let's move this down a bit just a little smaller. That's just Find this a bit. Maybe just add one more point to kind of another one here. Let's, that'll give us a little bit of a lip. We're gonna move our segments. Just make them uh, not too much here. We're just gonna we're gonna bring up our segments here in the lathe and just get ourselves something standard. This should work really nice. Okay, it's a little harsh there, so we're gonna just smooth this out a bit. Refine it. At another point, let's bring that down. That gives us that little bottom or upper lip that uh, you can have the plate. Just give us some detail there. All right, so that's pretty much it for this. We're just going to just adjust this just a bit, widen that a bit, a little bit of tweaking. You tweak this as long as you want. Uh, I'm liking what we got so far, and this is going to be nice. So now we can get on to. Um, creating our spoon so that we have something that something that can sit on the plate to give us more detail here. So let's get on to the next one. It's creating this. Alright, so now we're going to start creating the spoon. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our front view here or top, wherever you want to go. Um, and I'm going to just bring out a plane here and uh, change our segments. Alright, so we're going to 
Move this over, we're gonna convert this to an edible poly and just kind of get a four corner, a four square here. Um, plane just so we can work with something here. So we'll center this out. We're just gonna start to move this guy, all these vertices around to make a spoon shape. All right, we're gonna use a little, it's like a little mini spoon. Again, for espresso, so you can stir your espresso and make it, uh, if you want to add sugar or stir, whatever you do with espresso, <laughs> whatever you, your liking is. So we're just going to um, add some more vertices with the cut tool here and start to sculpt out our spoon. So not much to this, but just enough to create something uh, unique here for our render. All right, so I'm gonna bring out some of these guys. I'm just connecting and dragging out, shift dragging. Uh, I mean, I'm just working with a plane right now. I'm just getting kind of an upper uh, blueprint here of our spoon. And I'll focus on shaping it later. But right now, I just wanna get a, something here to work with. All right, so that looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do is grab our spoon and we're gonna Use our angle snap and go 90 degrees flat here on our grid. Now I'm using the symmetry modifier to uh, to work with here so that we can get some near effects. Bring up our, our little uh, span here of the uh, spoon and then just kind of start shaping out how our spoon looks from the 3D angle here our perspective mode. We're just going to add a little bit of a dip that spoons have. And we'll shorten this up. We can always modify this spoon once we start getting somewhere with our shape. More uh, detail here. So I'm going to add, convert this to an edible poly. And I'm going to add the shell modifier and just add some thickness, okay, on the um, inner amount. All right, we'll grab the outer edges here. Okay, I just want to get every outer edge of the spoon of its thickness here. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up chamfering this. Uh, so we can get some edges of the spoon here. So let's just we'll, got to make sure we select everything here and now chamfer. Okay, and we just want just kind of an edge like that. Uh, that's going to give us some nice uh, catches on the uh, on the side of the spoon here for the light. All right, we'll bring in our little bit of here of the shaft of the spoon. We're just going to tweak that a bit. Add some turbo smooth. Let's crank it up a bit. And look at that, we got a spoon. So we just might need to make sure our corners are good. All right, so I'm gonna target weld these guys together. So when you add your uh, edges, sometimes the uh, vertices get out of whack there. So you just gotta fix them and make sure you don't have any triangles because you don't want those. You wanna stay clear of those as much as you can anyways. End guns are, uh, you don't want any of those at all. That's a no-no. <laughs> so now we're just going to chamfer out an end gons If you don't know what it is, it's a uh, pretty much a five-sided polygon. Okay, you don't want that. So we're just going to target weld this area here, and that did not get chamfered, so we can fix that. All right, we'll just go across. Target weld here and here, and there you go. So we just get a little bit of a crease there. All right, so I'm just going to grab this top um, edge here and just move those up. And that should pretty much conclude the spoon and finish that off. And we're looking pretty good here. I'm just going to add a little bit of a dip here, a little more dip to the spoon, and then uh, we're finished. And um, we can now move off and start to create our scene and use the Corona Render for the magic. All right, guys, so we'll uh, 
Let's get on to the next part of this video. All right, one thing I did forget to uh, to do here before we start getting into our rendering, um, we need to create our fluid. So that way we have some kind of surface on the top that we can show that it is uh, full with uh, espresso. So let's uh, create on the side here our fluid. So what we're gonna do is use our famous line tool once again uh, to create our profile of our fluid. So we're gonna start with a line tool. We're gonna go to the bottom here we're just going to go underneath the uh, the surface of where um, the bottom of the cup is here. So we just want to stay up, uh, just right at the edge here. <clears throat> we don't want to be over it, and we don't want to be right on it. Um, we just want to be kind of over the edge of the thickness here. All right, so we're moving our the line tool up just a bit here, and we're going to start creating our profile. Coming down, and then we're just gonna go down like a little bit of a dip, so that gives us a little bit of like a, a little bit of an edge around the base of the uh, cup, so that the fluid looks like it's sitting inside the cup. All right, so we'll just straighten these out a bit. Okay, and we're just gonna move them, smooth them out. And this will create our fluid here. We want to get something pretty close here. Moving these guys, just adjusting, keeping along the line of the thickness of our glass. And you can see it's just a little bit inside, and that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, I might bring the top piece here just up a little bit. We want it to kind of be sinking in uh, just slightly, okay? just just very slightly. So I'm going to grab these, these guys, maybe the Z here, just bring it down, right down a bit here. There, that, that should do it. All right, so now once we grab that, we're going to do the lathe and then uh, go to the minimum here, then line, and that gives us the fluid here. So everything's looking quite nice. We're just going to do a couple adjustments here, make sure that we do see our lip a little bit. All right, so you can see it dips down just a bit. Gives us some realism here for that. And uh, Making sure our normals are flipped. Uh, they should be. The way to check that is go give yourself a edible poly modifier here. And if it's dark, that means it's flipped backwards. If it's lighter, you're gonna, that means the uh, the normals are flipped in the correct position. So they are, so we don't have to flip the normals. Okay, so I'm just gonna add some more segments here to, to give ourselves some uh, detail to our mesh. Um, or actually, I might just use the turbo smooth. Uh, let's go to the 15 segments. Uh, just want to bring this down a bit too as well so that our edge is a bit on the, uh, where the dip comes in. It's just a little bit less segments. But now you can see what happens is we get a very sharp edging there. We don't want that. So we're going to have to smooth that out. All right, take the turbo smooth off. We just want to loop this around. You bring this up a bit, take this one, loop it, and get rid of it. All right, and that's control backspace usually to get rid of a, a loop, okay, or an edge. I'm just going to make sure that this is not, the problem is here you can see that the fluid is a little bit, we want to make sure that it is inside the cup, and for some reason we lost, it came out. So we want to bring that back in. All right. There we go. So it's con has some contact there. And all we're going to have to do now, convert this to an animal poly, and then we can add a turbo smooth here. I just pasted the turbo smooth. And again, we got that edge that we don't want, so let's get rid of that. Loop, remove, take this segment, bring it, this edge, and bring it up. So that gives us that little bit of extra lip, just so it looks like it's pushing against that uh, inner part of the cup, the walls. 
All right, so that's it. That gives us the fluid, and now we can start getting onto the rendering, and this is the fun part. This is where the magic begins. It's also good to rename your objects if you can. It's just one, anything that uh, you might want, just so that organization. All right, we finally made it to the rendering part of this video, and now we're gonna start setting up our scene. We're gonna use Corona Render, and uh, that's pretty much it. We're gonna get something uh, cool here in just a moment. So let's start with creating a box. This is gonna replicate our, or this is gonna represent our table. All right, so we'll just drag this out. And we're going to come into our material editor here, and we're going to use our standard materials for now. All right, so we'll drag this out. We're just we're just trying to uh, get some angles here. I'm just going to select everything, group it, and go over here to our. Make sure that our group is in the center here. But pivots in the center of, for our group, and now we can just get a nice angle here. All right, so we're going to come over to our render setup of the Corona render, and um, you can find it down below as you assign your material, or sorry, your render, and um, you can get the Corona render at, over at the Corona render site, and um, if I drag it over here, you can go to coronarender.com uh, here, and you can see that it's free. You can download it there. Uh, they're in the alpha stage, or I might have said beta stage earlier, but they're in the alpha stage. Uh, so they have some new version out right now. Uh, and there's some examples of photos that look really good. Um, so go down there and grab it. Go to that site, grab it, and uh, start following along with this tutorial. If you haven't, and you're just watching this tutorial, uh, and then you can get some insights of what this uh, render engine can do and also pick up some modeling skills as well all right so um we're going to start off with some material so we got to go over a material here and we're going to select now the uh corona render but the first thing we want to do is we actually need to uh, make an hdr okay so we've got to get an hdr i'm using uh, my an hdr that i've so I cannot provide it in this uh, video tutorial, but uh, feel free to use any kind of interior or wherever you want, any kind of HDR you want for your scene. I'm just going to use this interior here. Um, we're going to make sure that's in the environment slot, okay, and we also make sure that it's a spherical environment here, so that's in the mapping. All right, so once we hit the render, we're just going to want to get something simple. We just want to see what we're looking at. So far, Everything's looking pretty good. We just don't have any materials applied, but you can see with just clicking a button here with the environment attached, we already get some nice shadowing and things that we can work with. So um, we need to start getting some proper materials. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head over, let's get a material here, and that's the Corona material. Double click on that. And just like V-Ray or any kind of uh, render that you have. Uh, it's pretty much very similar to it. It's got your diffuse, uh, and then you have um, also the reflection area. We're going to bring that level up to a 1. That gives us full uh, reflection, and then our glossiness needs to come down. We don't need full glossiness. We just got to rough it up just a bit. All right, so it's not 100% uh, reflection. Um, we'll come over to our color and we'll use a fall off here. And now what I'm going to do is come down and I'm going to add a little bit to our curve. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure they're Bezier curve. We'll bring that up. So we'll get over here on the top area section of this where the one or our one uh, number is here of the curve. What we can do is bring it up so that we get some reflections towards the edges. And if we bring this to the middle, or up towards where it is here you can see the middle of our sphere gets a more reflection so we're going to bring that down we'll bring this upper uh, our upper point up a little bit and that gives us just a little bit of uh, reflection hitches to hit towards the edge sign it to the material or sign it to the object and then uh, hit render and see what we get
All right, so we have our plate of material added and it's a little bit hot right now and that's could be it. You can see it's very blown out there. Uh, so what we can do is we can uh, come to our environment tab here. Uh, we can adjust our output. So we'll come up to our output. Um, we're looking down at the RGB levels. We can bring that down that way. That gives us some contrast, but better yet, we can just use the output to darken our HDR. So depending on um, how dark you want to get it, uh, so you see the details, but I don't like it because that might be a little too dark. And uh, like I can just show you here what we're going to get. We might get too dark of an image. As you can see, yes, it is quite dark. You could also use uh, some uh, color, like some exposure to that. But uh, what I want to do is try to get the HDR as correct as possible. Uh, so we're going to go to a 0.5 on our output level here and that's looking a lot better all right so you can now see that there's no hot spot that we're getting on our cup all right so i can move the offset around here and that's going to change the uh, orientation of our hdr so we can get a better um, angle here but i want to get something very pretty you want to have something that you can look at in the background now the thing is it's key here is that so that looks a little funky uh, but the key thing is too is that you got to remember is that we're going to be using depth of field which is going to pretty much blur out most of the background because this is kind of a macro shot uh, well this is a macro shot of the cup so we don't really need to focus too much on that backdrop that you see here and if i move this around and trying to get a proper angle uh, right now we don't have to do too much of it but i do want to get something that it almost looks like it's sitting on top of the table and we're looking out into the room somewhere, somehow. Uh, that gives us kind of a feel that it's maybe on a kitchen table, or not a kitchen table, maybe a kitchen, kitchen countertop and looking onto the kitchen table, uh, if that makes sense. It's just something that doesn't look, something that looks legit that you would actually take this from like a, maybe an island in the kitchen, something like that. Um, so we'll move the offset around. Uh, this is, a lot of this is trial and error. Um, I'm moving this around as I'm just trying to get some kind of look and that kind of aha, yes, this is what I'm looking for moment. Um, so something like this could look good. Uh, you can see that, you can see the table, that's the kitchen table in the HDR, but maybe we're looking from the uh, kitchen, the island in the kitchen, and we're looking on, and you can see in the background the kitchen table. So that should work. And then with the depth of field, I'll blur it up enough that it looks like there's something back there. You're not even sure what's back there by the time we get through this. So let's start to create the spoon material and um, then we'll start to play more with the backdrop. So the spoon, we'll just uh, we want to make sure our diffuse is kind of like a grayish, not fully black. Uh, our IOR, we're going to crank that up so that it's about, it's quite high. So it's, um, giving us that nice reflection. Uh, I'm gonna bring the glossiness down by 0.9. All right, we're 100% sharp there. And then uh, we'll apply it to the spoon. Hit render and let's see what we get. We get, should get a nice chrome spoon. Something like that. It's pretty good. And this render engine is very fast. It's very, very, uh, it's very nice. It does a lot of, uh, it has a lot of cool features in it. Um, it's all also in alpha stage, so it's definitely got so much potential. Um, and uh, I've been liking it so far. This is great, and uh, the community is very uh, strong as well. And it's starting to uh, create nice uh, results. And it's very close to being a production uh, render. If not, you can use it probably for production now if you wanted to. It's just going to get even better. So again, I'm just moving the camera around, trying to get some more angles. I'm moving the um, the HDR around, uh, just trying to find the right spot somewhere where I'm just going to be thrilled to have that as a final output. Um, and uh, you can play with this. You know, you can even switch out HDRs just to try something else. You never know what you're going to get if you 
you just want to experiment it a bit and um, see what you come up with. Um, but right now, let's try to get our depth of field going. So I'm going to go to our camera, and in the modified stack, you can see that there's a camera mod for Corona. So you want to use that to get your depth of field. Um, so make sure it's on. And I bring the f-stop down to 1.2 for now. That's going to give me an extreme amount of depth of field that will give us a nice shallow look, that macro feel. Um, we might even need to go lower. But you can see now the background gets blurred out. And as, as we let this uh, crisp up, uh, we start seeing the image come together quite nicely. I'm going to go with 0.5, and we want even more blur in the background there. Okay, so 0 0.5, that's, that should do it right there. That gives us a nice depth of field. We're focusing on this part of the plate um, and the mug or cup. So that's giving us that macro feel. So what we want to do is look at it, angle it up just a bit so that we can see a little bit more of the fluid surface here. And uh, we select our, our fluid, and we need to now get some kind of uh, texture on there so that it looks like a foam. So most of the time, uh, espressos, as they come out, there's a foam layer uh, on the top. So we want to replicate that here in Corona as well. So what we're going to do is uh, get ourselves now, one thing that you can do is actually just make a fluid, and that's what I'm going to do here to show you that. But also, we want to do the foam, and that's what our final look's going to be. But I can show you here by creating the coffee. We can, uh, with these settings here, we can get kind of a coffee look. So we'll move our refraction up, uh, get our brownish color here. So if you don't want to add the foam layer, you could just go with this kind of. Uh, Kind of look here. Okay, I'm gonna go with the All right, just uh, I just want to see if that affected anything in it much did it at this point so we're just going to render this out and just see what we get so you can see now we just have the coffee uh, look there like just a fluid uh, without the foam um, I like this but at some point that's just going to look a little too plain so what we're going to do is um, let's bring up our camera a bit and let's create our foam material and, um, I have a texture so that what I can do is uh, find a foam texture um, and we're going to a new material here. I'm going to call it foam. We'll go over to our, we'll apply it, and then go to our bitmap here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this foam. I got one on the desktop. I'm just going to apply it here to our, and use a UVW map. We're going to apply it to our fluid here, and then just drag it out until it gets to an area here that looks correct. So that looks good. All right, you can see we have our foam. So that's just to diffuse. What we've got to do is we've got to add a little bit of highlights and reflections, um, but it's also dull, quite dull. So I'm going to use a bump map. I'm going to use the same foam, um, the diffuse as the bump as well, because that will just help. We don't have to go to a black and white image at this point. Uh, reflection, I'm going to crank that up, and then let's really add, bring down our glossiness to about 0.52. Or so that's just a rough estimate here um, translucency we want to bring that up <clears throat> but we're also going to copy over our diffuse layer there uh, and then we're just going to go to one so I'll give us a little bit of um, translucency let's say 0.3 that looks pretty good render that give it a test here we get Getting that looking pretty nice. Okay, you can see that uh, we get a little bit too much gloss there where the light is hitting. Um, but this is not looking too bad. This is looking quite real. You can almost go with this, but I do want to do some adjustments. Um, so let this render out just a bit more. So as you let it sit, uh, you're getting a better image. So the longer you hold it, the more um, crisper the image is going to get. Um, 
It's pretty much just like any kind of real-time engine, render engine that is. And uh, what I'm going to do is just bring this down a bit. Don't want too much glossiness. Uh, translucency come up a bit. Bring it to 0.5. And we're going to do a self-illumination. Uh, self-illuminate, uh, you just don't want it to be 100%. So if I put the multiplier to 1, you're going to see you're going to get it like a light source. So we don't want that. Uh, I just want it to glow just a little bit, almost like light's kind of going through it. So I'm kind of faking it out a little bit here. Uh, so point 0.1 should do it. Um, if you need it at all, I'm just going to use it for this. Uh, it might be not a big deal to not even use it at all. But that's just personal preference. All right, so we get into our camera mode here, and uh, I'm going to also add this wood texture I found. This you can go into cgtextures.com, pick up uh, some material or textures from there. I have a count there, so in in this part I'm using a lower res one, so we'll have a little bit of um, some tiling in this uh, in this shot. But for the final, I actually uh, downloaded the high quality of this. Um, but this is pretty much what you want to do to create your wood or whatever it is you want to. You can use tile if you want, like it's on a tile surface. Uh, I'm just going to choose this wood texture. Uh, when I render this out, you can see uh, that this is looking quite nice. All right, so you can see a little bit of the uh, how the foam is with the glow, um, and then our even our wood surface is looking really nice. And um, if you get a high res texture, that even looks even better. So, and that shows even in the final image, rendered image of this uh, tutorial, you'll see that quality looks quite nice. So I'm just gonna paste the bump, or uh, paste the diffuse into the bump slot here of our table. Get some glossiness going. What we're gonna do is just bring this down a little bit here. Um, what I'm gonna do is just take our Diffuse here and bring it into our glossiness slot, and that will give us. Uh, I can adjust it down here, and I'll just bring it down a bit just so we get a little bit of highlight, or a little bit of reflection. And we're just going to mess with this number just a bit. So hit render and see what we got. Okay, so we got a glossy uh, table here, and a little too much gloss for my liking. Um, so, what we're going to do is uh, and come down and just bring this back up just a bit and dull this up a little bit and have it more all right so we'll uh give a render here and let's see what we get all right so that's looking a lot better the table has a less gloss so it just looks uh, you get a little bit of highlight there and um our foam is looking good and everything is looking quite nice even our depth of field so um you got to make sure that your um your target distance of your camera is aiming at the mug okay or the cup and um, this is what we have for our final result I just paused it and then refreshed it after I let it sit for a little bit and then I'm just coming in and changing our color mapping a bit that's just uh, a personal liking what you want to do with it here I'm just changing the white balance a bit uh, the contrast um, move these numbers up a bit uh, you can see it's a nice looking contrast and um, I'm going to sat for a little bit. This is also a 1080p render and uh, came out very nice. So that pretty much uh, sums up this tutorial and I hope you learned a lot from it. Uh, you created a full espresso scene here. Uh, you can add, feel free to add more to the table if you want. Uh, but I just wanted to go through um, how we uh, render this out and also how we create this whole entire scene and uh, get these realistic results. Uh, it just gets better and better so you keep on learning and I hope this uh, helped a lot of people and uh, you guys can start with this tutorial and make some cool images.